Hi, my name is Dan, and these are the top five pirate-themed games. At number one, we have a true classic. Sid Meier's Pirates is where it's at, if you are looking for a game that has started it all. It mixes strategy, action, and RPG elements to create a fun, swashbuckling adventure. You play as a young captain, set on a mission to free his family from an evil baron. This quest will take a pirate all around the Caribbean seas. There, he will take part in the many battles between the four available nations. The game is full of naval fights where the player will blast enemy ships and then hijack them to take over the booty. On land, the player can visit the governors to pick up some jobs, such as chasing down an enemy ship or freeing a damsel in distress. By finishing these tasks, the player gains higher faction ranks, which unlocks perks while in that nation's port. In these towns, the young captain can trade with the local traders, as well as visit a tavern to hire more men and buy maps or special items. There are also shipyards where the player can buy, fix, or sell ships. The lands of the Caribbean Sea are also full of booty to find and places to conquer in a turn-based combat system. There are also different difficulty settings to choose from in the game. This makes pirates easy to learn but difficult to master, as the game really does get spicy on the more challenging settings. At number 2 we have Pirates of the Caribbean by Akela. The developers are best known for the Sea Dogs franchise, which is a series of RPGs about piracy. The Pirates of the Caribbean game was first intended to be released as Sea Dogs 2. If not for the presence of the Black Pearl known from the film series, and some lines from Kira Knightley, this game would not have any links to the Jack Sparrow license other than the setting. You play as Nathaniel Hawke a captain hired by the English to fight against the French on the Caribbean Sea. The game does finally face the captain with the notorious Black Pearl ship and skeletons. However, most of the game is based around the same ideas as Sid Meier's Pirates. You sail around raiding ships and forts and then selling your loot to various traders. The game allows far more flow, as unlike in the Meier's Pirates, Akela allows the players to roam freely on the islands in third-person view. There are plenty of jungles and caves to explore in search of treasures. The RPG elements are fun to explore as the game lets the player choose who to play as. Based on how you will develop the stats of your character, you can become either a good sailor, fighter, trader, leader or a cannoneer. The game allows you to recruit other characters too who will accompany you on your ventures. They all have different stats that complement whatever skills the captain is missing. This adds a pretty cool party system mechanic to the game, where the player can decide which character to add to the party to patch up whatever stats might be lacking. At number 3 we have The Secret of Monkey Island, which is a point and click adventure game. Unlike the previous entries, Monkey Island doesn't let the player plunder and kill at free will. Instead, the game takes the pirate setting and uses it to deliver a chain of funny moments that might happen to a landlubber who tries to become a scallywag. In this case, that somebody is a young man with a silly name like Guybrush Freepwood. The game uses a lot of ideas and language known from pirate stories to set them up for a joke with Guybrush being the punchline in all of them. Monkey Island is a fun story to play through with a healthy dose of laughs and fantastical concepts that made the game feel like a children's tale with sneaky adult jokes. The developers have also included a few jokes within the game aimed at the overall adventure game trend from back in the day, where pre-internet players would call helplines to be advised on how to complete the game. Those would come in handy though, as just like in many other games of this genre, there are plenty of point and clicky puzzles to solve in Monkey Island. At number 4 we have Risen 2 The Dark Waters. Risen 2 is the sequel to Risen, the first RPG game by Piranha Bytes after Gothic 3. The game didn't get a lot of praise for its pirate setting as it didn't express it enough through gameplay mechanics. While I agree that it's a shame that the game didn't have naval combat or manual sailing, the pirate setting of the game is worth noticing for its cool mix of styles. Risen 2 is a third person role playing game where the character travels between various islands to discover voodoo magic and ancient gods who are a threat to the pirate world as we know it. The game has the same character growth arc as many of its gothic ancestors. You start at the bottom getting bullied by everyone only to grind your way right to the top to become a feared captain. The voodoo magic, sea gods, pirates and the inquisition is a cool mixture of themes that provides an interesting fantasy setting for the game. The only drawback of Risen 2 is the the lack of gameplay parts that are present in other pirate based RPGs such as sailing, trading and naval combat. Finally at number 5 we have Assassin's Creed 4 The Black Flag which is the last AC game I truly enjoyed. It's an Assassin's Creed game set in a pirate setting, and that turned out to be an amazing clash. The main backbone of the game is still based on the same principles as the previous games, where you free run around the map, quietly stabbing bad people with your hidden blade. However, what was new was the addition of naval combat and open sea sailing where the player could freely hunt big fish, 
find treasures and die through shipwrecks. The Caribbean setting of Black Flag also worked wonders, with plenty of jungles to sneak through and different towns to explore. It felt like the developers went that extra mile to make sure they immersed the player in their setting. The sound design consisted of thematic music and shanties and each location felt ideal to the setting. The overall speed of naval combat in AC4 felt like an advance on the formula known in Sid Meier's Pirate and Achilles games. The mobility of an Assassin's Creed game made many features of the Black Flag feel more dynamic than any other pirate game, and I believe it is the most graphically pleasing pirate title to date. So these were my top 5 pirate games. What are yours? Let me know in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel for more weekly videos like this one where I give my opinion on video games, even though nobody asked me for it. And I'll see you soon. Bye.